before three weeks, we, we met each other at the training camp from LFC in Saalfelden, and we talked about this. And Jürgen said, um, his whole life, this is maybe this is his absolutely powerful strength. His whole life in the school as a child, when everyone said, no chance, Jürgen said, it's a chance. As he was a little child on the football pitch and he said, no, no, we have a chance. It's 0-3, doesn't matter, we have a chance. I think this is born. This, if, you're, if you're young and you don't have this, this character, um, that can't be true that, that you get this character if you're 16 or 20. It's no, no possibility. This is born. like an explosion. Pah. I've never seen anything like this. The most crazy party Mainz ever had. And Jürgen was God. This is one of the best days of my whole life. There were the celebrations in the city. And I told him, we should stop going now, because it's never going to be as good as this. I remember him saying, if we get the first goal, Anfield will do the rest. It is the greatest night in Anfield history, and it wouldn't have happened without the crowd, and it wouldn't have happened without the players, but the person who brought all that together was Jürgen. It is your post-match show. We're on the bus, we're leaving Kiev after Liverpool have been beaten. John Gibbons, it hurts. Yeah, it's a real tough one to take. I think the lads were just angry inside that they hadn't got that bit of silverware yet. That it wasn't even spoken about. Like it wasn't even spoken about during that year. If, if we going for the league, are we going for the title, or we going for the Champions League, and that wasn't spoken about. It was just a very do attitude. Just do it. Just do it. Just go and win. Keep winning. You know, then you're on that momentum and you, you're just playing and knocking out the wins and things seem so easy and, um, you know, how good City are, you have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and deal with different factors. But, you know, that's when how we wanted to play was coming to fruition and we, we were performing well and, and everything was sort of clicking into place. The Champions League group 18-19 was really tough. PSG, Napoli, the... The, the, the really good Champions League sides and, and I say Red Star give us a bit of a shout out there as well so relief to get through, delighted to get through and then you're rewarded with a trip to Munich and tricky draw in the first game and I think they were a bit cocky after that they thought they'd done the business they got the draw at Anfield. You know to go there and, and knowing how much it's going to take to, to get through at that point um, you know I think that was where you have that confidence in each other and the belief of how you're playing and and probably how that season was going, you know, we were, we could have spells where we just blew teams away in, in certain periods of the game. We were playing great football, exciting football, and, um, you know, I think that was a big confidence boost, I think, going there and getting that result. Yeah, we were confident going to Barcelona because they were struggling a little, little bit and they were seeing how good Liverpool were and the Barcelona fans you were speaking to, you know, in taxis or bars were saying, oh, do you think Liverpool are going to be too strong? You just can't believe what you're saying because Liverpool had, had turned up at the, at the new camp, played really well, taken the game to Barcelona, had more possession and, and, and somehow lost 3-0 and I was in the away end, it's up in the gods in Barcelona, up in the skies, and you're looking around at each other, and I remember thinking like, I don't know what I've just watched really. You know, I don't think we performed bad in, in Barcelona really, I think it was one of those weird games, you know, we played pretty good, they you know, got some good goals, could have put it to bed again when in the last minute they had a chance. It felt so unfair for you and for them as well, and for those group of players who, who've been so amazing, so yeah, just so deflated at full time. And then, you know, you have the city the night before and 
looks like they're, they're going to struggle and then Vinny slices one in top corner and I've seen that shot 50 times go over. And to this day, that's like the lowest I've ever been about 40. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, we're going to get about 97 points. We're unbelievable and we're not going to win anything. And obviously before this, we've lost the European Cup final the year before. Salah gets injured against Newcastle, Salah's not playing yeah. and, and Firmino's injured as well. And you're like, I know we're Liverpool and we sort of, this is the night that we do do things like this, but we can't because Firmino's injured and Salah, so it's hard yeah. line. Come in the next day and the manager was like, has anyone got anything to say about last night? No, right, here we go. And he was like, you know, for most teams, this would be impossible. The only reason we have a chance is because it's you. You're going into that game thinking, is there another comeback left? Like, we've had so many comebacks where it's like, maybe just happened, we haven't quite got there, and you're thinking, it's just going to be another one. Let's turn up, cheer, cheer them on, and see what happens. I got asked him, Wait, what do you reckon then? Because everyone knew we were out, so many thoughts. And I actually said something. There's one postcode on planet Earth where this is actually possible tonight. That with this group of players and this crowd, this could be done. So while it's 90%, 95, 96, 7, whatever the percent say, and but you're in the alehouse and then you walk into the ground and then you get into the cop. And the cop acts stupid. I remember him saying, if we get the first goal, Anfield will do the rest. Obviously the game starts and, and we get a corner and you know it's the loudest roar I've ever heard for a corner in, in my life. I remember you know, sat behind the bench because I, I weren't fit and seeing the first goal going and, and it was like, oh wow, this, this can happen here. We're looking at all these players, we've got one of our greatest ever players playing against us. One of the greatest players we've ever played and, you know, and all that. And despite all that adversity, he'd encourage the players to believe it. And because the players believed it, the crowd believed it, and then all of a sudden they're going to make a fast start. And then all of a sudden... That five minutes between Wijnaldum's first goal and Wijnaldum's second goal is, is some of the best of my life, to be honest. I've never experienced anything like that in a, in a ground where, you know, the, the first one goes in and you're still celebrating it and everyone's going, come on, we can do this. And you're, you know, like, it, it was bedlam in the cop, by the way. It was absolute bedlam in the cop, bodies everywhere and then suddenly the, the ball gets crossed in and Ronaldo heads it. And by the time we'd scored the third goal to make us level, we knew we were going to do it. And by the time we got the goal that clinched it, it was like, well, we're going to score the next goal if anyone does. We knew it was done. It wasn't like blow the whistle ref. With players missing, obviously, and, and that's credit down to the manager and his staff at how well drilled the whole squad was, that players can come in in a game like that and perform. It is the greatest night in Anfield history and it wouldn't have happened without the crowd and it wouldn't have happened without the players, but the person who brought all that together was Jürgen. No question about it. It didn't matter who was in that Barcelona team, it didn't matter. Anfield ate them all alive. And, and at the end, like it's such a poignant moment at the end that you see the, the team line up in the same way that they did it against West Brom all those, those years before. They're stood looking at the cop and we're singing You'll Never Walk Alone back to them. And you, you watch the footage back and they're just like wide eyes. I think Fabinho's crying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jurgen yeah. Klopp's like swaying with the team and, and it's everyone together. It's the, it's the team in a line looking at the fans. We all did it together that night. And obviously we had to get over the disappointment of, of, of the league as well. Um, so that, that was a weird sort of thing. Obviously there were some disappointing lads. I mean, I remember Hendo being so, so down after that 97 point season. I mean, can you can imagine the captain of Liverpool have never won the Premier League. They've just got 97 points and they've not won the Premier League. Like, you can't imagine how, how that would make, make you feel, especially as captain. So he was down, I remember, and we had all had a few days off and, and then, you know, it all switched to Madrid, didn't it, in the Spurs game and getting ready for that. It was more like a normal game the second time we got to the final, really, and I thought that was important. And, you know, we found out the team pretty early and it was important that, you know, the lads who were disappointed not playing were, were bang, doing everything they can to support the team and prepare the team as much as possible. And, um, yeah, I'd say it was, a, it was a calm confidence going into the game. <laughs> To 
go on stage and see how full it was and see it continuing to fill and to see the unbelievable quantity of red. They're here because of belief. They're here because of love. They're here because they want to be part of this thing that they've seen, lived in many cases, seen and lived in some others since, since 2015, since Manchester United, since Dortmund, that it was all of those things being brought together in that moment, but especially since Liverpool were back playing the Champions League. Football isn't everything. There's more to life than this, and there has to be. But that is that the highest calling of football being central to people's enjoyment. That's what Madrid was on that stage, in that moment, at that time. That's what it was. But also, different to Kiev, we're going to win. This is the one. We obviously scored the other goal and you go up and you think oh we've got something to lose here and you, you feel the old jelly legs and things like that and we discussed it and it still happens and that's what playing in these massive games does. Just when you're thinking this is going to be a really nervy end, the ball lands to Divock Origi, he's right in front of us, right in front of us where he shapes, hits it, left foot right in the corner and, and that release, I can still feel it. Here's Origi! It's 2-0! Three minutes left, and two plus nil equals six for Liverpool! Yes! Ironically, we, we won the Champions League with, without playing our, our best game, and, and that, that was the level of the group at, the, at that moment. They could they could win or we could win football matches without playing at our best, and that's what we done in the Champions League final. To see that with my own eyes, to see Kenny Daglish um, in Bucha to tears, three four seats away. Uh, I was holding it back. <laughs> I'm holding it back now. The thought. Um, it was, it was a wonderful moment and to, to experience that as a fan and be invited by the club, it was special. Well done, guys. The celebrations went long on into the night. I don't even think there was any rest that night. It was straight, straight back to Liverpool, wasn't it, for the, uh, the parade. And the parade was just you know, extraordinary. I was worried for him on the back of that bus on the ALA, you know, it was like, you know, giving it the six and, uh, and knowing that part of the six meant I am part of this history and part of the tapestry of this club and I celebrate that. This isn't about me. This isn't I have won the European Cup with my players. This is we have won the European Cup and these are our players and we are the players of this club and we are, we are number six in a continuum of your club. It was just so lovely and it's just seeing all that colour and happiness and energy and all that. And I think I think when that happens that is the, the icing on the cake if you like. That is the um, the Liverpool family celebrating together with another monumental bit of silverware and success that's gonna be edged in the club's history. That is the the boasting part if you like, look at us, look how look what we can do together, look how special we can celebrate it all together. So once they get that bit of success, it was always going to have that snowball effect. Um, the fans were all on side, he, he had the fans in his hand exactly where he needed them. And when you get that connection at Liverpool, fans, manager, players, all pushing the right way, and the owners being as supportive as they was, 
that's the winning formula at Liverpool. It's, it's a very tough juggernaut to stop when that's the case. felt that the, the group was not really missing something, so everything was there. It was, the jokers were there, the, the, so the funny guys, the, the, let's say the adult ones that you know kept everybody in check. So we had a good mixture of, of personalities and people and of course the quality was there. I couldn't tell you after the fifth game, and I think we won most of them, maybe all, I don't know really. I didn't really think about the championship or that it's, it will be possible to get there. It was nice while, while doing it, but let's do the next one and the next one. And so I think that was the, the spirit in the team. Wir spielten eine sehr gute Runde, aber wir flogen im Pokal in Offenbach aus, im Elfmeterschießen. Und ähm, wir waren komplett äh, auch äh, enttäuscht. Und zwar, wir hatten, glaube ich, fünf Matchbälle auf dem Fuß und es ging gar nichts. Und im Elfmeterschießen habe ich sogar noch den ersten Elfmeter gehalten, aber wir flogen raus. Und wir haben eigentlich auch da aus der Niederlage haben wir noch mehr Emotionen geschnappt und noch mehr Power geschnappt und äh, sind dann in der Liga immer besser geworden. Führten irgendwann auch die Liga an, lange Zeit und wollten uns einfach den Titel nicht mehr nehmen lassen. Aber es gab eigentlich den Moment, dass nie einer dieses Wort in den Mund genommen hat, weil alle sehr respektvoll mit dem Titel umgegangen sind und ähm, wir bis zum letzten Moment eben nicht darüber sprechen wollten, über die Meisterschaft. During that first league-winning season, there were many, many games, I think, where a lot of us on the South Stand were just looking, literally looking at each other and saying, what's going on here? Um, why are we so much better than everybody else? Uh, it was really, it took you a while to, to understand how, how this thing works, you know? Um, I mean, even against very, very good teams. Um, whenever we lost the ball, we immediately won the ball back. Most of the fans I've talked to since say that around Christmas they felt, they looked at this table and said, God, we really can't lose this, you know? But of course you don't want to jinx anybody. Uh, so, and of course in the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich, you, you know, um, I mean, they didn't turn out to be uh, the main competitors that season, but you know, you, you just tend to be a bit more careful. <laughs> I don't remember really feeling pressure for most of the season. Towards the end, you kind of think, oh, but maybe something is possible here. And of course the pressure kicks in then, but until that, and maybe that's, why, uh, that's because we had a lot of young players that were just having fun and just doing stuff and uh, not expecting a lot. Es gab das Spiel gegen Nürnberg, das war das Spiel, wo klar war, in Köln muss Leverkusen verlieren und dann sind wir deutscher Meister und es gibt diese Stadiondurchsage von äh, Norbert Dickel. Man hatte Smartphones, man kriegte so mit, ah, es läuft ganz gut, wir schossen das 1 zu 0, irgendwie 2 0, dann war die zweite Halbzeit und dann war klar, Leverkusen verliert in Köln. Alle Menschen geweint, sie haben 
komplett äh, nicht gewusst, wohin mit sich. Es haben sich Menschen umarmt, sie haben getanzt. Das Stadion war in Ekstase. Es war surreal. Ähm, aber man hat sich gekniffen und dann war klar, hey, jetzt ist es soweit. Und jetzt ist die Deutsche Meisterschaft hier. Und der Rest war Bierdusche und Jubel und der Rest war Chaos. Aber Chaos im Jubel, in der Freude. Und es hat dieser Stadt unglaublich gut getan, den Menschen so wahnsinnig viel gegeben, dass dieses Stadion nur ein kleiner Ort war, aber in der ganzen Stadt und auch in vielen großen Bereichen des Ruhrgebiets und drumherum war einfach eine unglaublich Befreiung da, eine wirkliche Befreiung. And, and in the end winning the title, pure joy, and nothing else to say, I mean we celebrated for quite some time, <laughs> quite some days, and it was really, really a lot of fun. Jürgen in, in the middle of it, he, he, can, he can have a party, I can tell you. Die, die, es ist Tradition in Dortmund, dass immer wenn es was, immer wenn was gewonnen wird, wenn es was zu zeigen gibt, ein Pokal, ein Cup, dann fährt man zum Borsigplatz. Und dort fährt man um den Borsigplatz herum und es sind 500, 600, 700.000 Menschen da und alle jubeln der Mannschaft zu. Sie sind nicht nüchtern, sie trinken viel Bier und sie feiern den ganzen Tag und es geht in die Stadt und in der Stadt wird nochmal die Schale präsentiert. Es ist sozusagen der Genießertag, der Tag nach, der großen, nach dem großen Erfolg. Und dann ist ganz Dortmund auf den Beinen. Man hat den Eindruck, alle sind draußen, alle sind unterwegs, alle tragen gelbe Hemden. Es ist eine einzige Party. The whole city went totally mad. It was unbelievable. Everyone was on the street after the, the win and uh, celebrated. And Dortmund lives, lives again. And uh, we, were, we were dead seven years ago or six years ago. And now we, we, they can't, uh, can't imagine what happened in the, in the last years. Das war mein, erst, mein erstes Mal, mein erster Titel. Es waren viele Spieler, die den ersten Titel gewonnen haben. Es ging Traum Erfüllung. Und unabhängig von dem ersten Titel war eben die Emotion in der Stadt was ganz Besonderes. Es war halt aufgrund dessen, dass wir viele Jahre gescheitert sind, auf den Steps bis dahin, ja, war es halt eine Befreiung und eine Erlösung. Und ähm, ja, der Titel hat uns eigentlich noch hungriger wirken lassen in den nächsten Jahren. Also wir hatten immer noch mehr Lust. There were the celebrations in the city and I went with my son and we didn't really catch a glimpse of the team because it was just, it was just too crowded. And on the next day I met an old friend of mine who is also a Dortmund fan. And I told him, you know what, we should stop going now because it's never going to be as good as this. And he said, yeah, I think you're right. I th you're probably right. I mean, we, of course, we will continue to go, but I think you're right. And one year later, he phoned me and he said, you were wrong. <laughs> This one is even better. Nein, der Start war schwierig und ähm, es war überhaupt nicht abzusehen, dass es eine Titelverteidigung geben könnte. I expected Bayern to bounce back um, because the rule in the Bundesliga used to be that Bayern sort of, Bayern are the favorites, Bayern will win it one or two times and then they will have an off year and then somebody else will win it and then enraging Bayern so much that they'll, that they'll probably bounce back or so. Wir kamen aus dem Urlaub zurück und haben natürlich genauso weiter hart an unseren Ding gearbeitet wie zuvor. Aber in der Winterpause lagen wir zehn Punkte in der Bayern. Und wir mussten uns kurz schütteln. Und für viele war der Titel eigentlich dann und die Meisterschaft entschieden. Nur für Jürgen nicht. Der sagte, jetzt geht's erstmal richtig los. The spirit was still there. We were still a bunch of, of hungry young and old players that wanted to enjoy and, and wanted to have the, the, the best outcome. And he let us do that.
Second part of the season, they won 15 out of 17 matches and drew two. They never lost again. It was unbelievable. It was, was Klopp at his best. Eintagsfliegen gibt es ja hin und wieder mal, aber dass das dann noch bestätigt wird im Folgejahr, das hatten, glaube ich, auch die wenigsten erwartet. Playing Bayern was, is always something special. Beating them, beating them so convincingly, and beating them so convincingly in the final. And the third thing is, Dortmund had never won double, double before. So it was also a first in, in the club's long history. That made it extra special. Für uns war es natürlich was ganz Besonderes, dass wir das erste Double gewonnen haben. Aber auch das bestärkte uns eben auch immer wieder in die Arbeit und an die Gemeinschaft. Ein unglaubliches Team gehabt und ein unglaublicher Teamgeist und ähm, da war jeder für den anderen da. It was unbelievable. I, I don't know, half a million people in, in Dortmund on the streets. We were riding with the bus through them and all you could see is happy faces, happy tears maybe. And, uh, Everything was black and yellow. It was, it was crazy. It was really crazy. And that again reminded us that this is um, almost like, like church. It's different for people in this region of Germany than it is maybe in, in Bavaria or, or elsewhere in, the, in, the, in Germany. And, and you could really feel that. And that was, um, that made us proud. I'm now speaking as a football fan, not, not a Dortmund fan. Just most of us football fans will never ever win something. Then most of us football fans will never have a team that we really love. You know, you, you could be lucky that there's a really good team, like five or six really cool players, but still just to have a team that everybody likes is, is very rare. Most of us football fans will only very rarely have a coach we like. You know, we respect them, they win things for us. Even, even Ottmar Hitzfeld, who won the Champions League for Dortmund, was very well liked by everybody, very respected, but he wasn't the sort of he wasn't the sort of coach you would love. And finally, most of us football fans only very rarely see really, really good football. So but to have all four things in one season, this is unheard of. You know, I don't know anybody who's ever ever done that. And I, I wouldn't have thought it possible. It was just um, it was just it was magic. First attempt, there was a point missing. Second attempt, there was a goal missing. So going into that third season, everybody was really pissed, you know? I mean, because it felt like we were already there. And then Frankfurt scored that goal. Ich kann mich an die Bilder von, von, von Globo noch erinnern, nach dem Spiel in Berlin, nach dem Spiel in Braunschweig, die gingen ja auch über das TV, gingen die ja quer durch, durchs Land, also das war für ihn schon sehr, sehr schwer zu verdauen. Da hatte ich erst mal Angst, dass er vielleicht nach dem zweiten Mal, dass er sagt, ja, er wirft jetzt hin und, und möchte nicht mehr weitermachen. Aber auch das ist Jürgen Klopp. Er wollte in Mainz nicht weggehen, um das große Ziel, ohne das große Ziel erreicht zu haben. It was maybe quite good that we failed, because this formed a really basic love to our club. And to make this development in, the, in these times also, to get a bigger club, this, this takes some time. Yeah? And you can make a lot of mistakes above all in, in the moment when, when you win something. And if you are on the top, you make the most mistakes. And uh, so it was afterwards, it was quite good that the development took some two or three years. And this is what he realized. Das Problem, warum wir nicht so dran geglaubt war, hatten, war, dass uns immer die ganze Mannschaft weggekauft wurde. Also wir mussten immer wieder von vorne komplett neu äh, 
äh, anfangen. Das, und wir wussten zu dem Zeitpunkt ja nicht, ob wir wieder die richtigen Spieler bekommen, ob wir wieder eine richtige Mannschaft bekommen. Was wir beide schon immer konnten, ein bisschen ist, die Leute überzeugen. Wir mussten natürlich den Leuten das Gefühl geben, dass es sich lohnt, wieder ins Stadion zu kommen. I was loaned out at the time to Karlsruhe where we were playing a team called Aachen and they were trying to get promoted as was Mainz was trying to get promoted as well. We were trying to avoid relegation and he was in the process of recruiting me too for that next year so there was some extra incentive for sure on my part. Mainz won against Trier 3-0 and they were waiting again, again. It was absolutely necessary that uh, Aachen don't win in Karlsruhe. It was the last minute and it was 1-0 Karlsruhe. If you got the experience in the last minute, in the last second, in the years before, you don't believe anything in the last minutes from this match in 2004. I think it was four minutes, maybe five minutes waiting time that felt like hours. It felt like ours. And then the game was over in Karlsruhe. From a completely silent stadium in the 94th minute, it was like an explosion. It was like an explosion. This one experience is one of the best days of my whole life. We, we, are, we are full of full of emotion now we we are in the first division you can't describe it I've never seen anything like this before and after that the most crazy party Mainz ever had and Jürgen was God we won 1-0 in that game and I scored they'd won and he knew that they were getting promoted and there was a clip of him asking some commentator on the field who scored, and then it was my name. Wer hat eigentlich so in Karlsruhe gemacht? Connor Casey. Ich adoptiere dich. Also das war, war bis zum heutigen Tag vielleicht auch einer meiner, 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 meiner größten Tage, jetzt mal losgelöst von familiären Dingen oder wahrscheinlich der größte überhaupt. Und ich glaube, wenn man heute Jürgen Klopp fragt, was war sein größter Erfolg, er erzählt er immer wieder dieser Tag. Unbelievable. It was my dream to come in the first division and everybody's running on the field, on the green and it's it was a, un it's, yeah. Yeah, unbelievable. It's, it's been a dream, but we never thought that we can reach it. I was noch im Stadion und hab noch moderiert. Dann kam jemand von der Polizei und hat zu mir gesagt, du musst dringend da runter ans Theater, wo wir praktisch die Nachfeier schon angeraumt hatten. Dann habe ich gesagt, was soll ich denn jetzt schon am Theater? Die Leute sind doch hier im Stadion. Und als ich unten ankam, standen schon 25.000 Menschen. on the most beautiful place in the, in the opposite of the cathedral from Mainz and there was the party and Jürgen was on the left side on the balcony the people was hanging on his lips this was absolutely fantastic I will never forget this this is the highlight of my life we are friends Jürgen and me we are friends for all this time in all this time so this is pure feeling this is so extremely emotional and uh, this is for all time in the bottom of my heart. 
Well, I mean, I could say um, everybody who was there probably remembers little of it. <laughs> but uh, it was really like the whole city was lit on fire. I mean, it felt like an explosion really of emotion because uh, you had tried again and again and all of it just felt so right and everybody in the city came together even people maybe uh, that hadn't followed uh, football the two seasons before uh, we were completely drunk <laughs> this time we went down to the theater and i just went up to the balcony and that was so fantastic I, it was the best day of my life i just went in because they all know me and nobody said, hey, what are you doing here? And we were on the balcony and down 22, 25,000 people. The, the place completely crowded. And the fire, that was unglaublich. We had practically two days gefeiert and two nächte. I couldn't go to work because I still had gefeiert habe and had to aber am nächsten Abend schon die Aufstiegsfeier moderieren wieder am Theater. Also es war unglaublich. So haben wir noch nie gefeiert. Madrid, I wasn't lucky enough to be in the ground. I'd gone over and stuff, but I remember being all right with not being in the ground for Madrid because I remember thinking we're going to win the league next year. Like that, that's the one next. We've, we've come within a point of it. Next year is the one where we go for it. And we've, we've talked loads on this about how it's the, the supporters, the players, the manager all thinking the same thing. It felt like from the start of that season they were all like, yeah, it, it's the league this year. We've lost out by a point in 97 last year. That's not happening again. And I remember like joking in the summer, we might have to win every game here. Like, how do you get 97 and not win it? But then the players must have literally thought the same thing of, yeah, we will never game then. To keep winning, start well, keep going, keep going. You know, the confidence high and, and, you know, the manager got it right in terms of, you know, how he was doing things, the message he was sending. We were scraping out results at times without good performances, but, you know, the message was always bang on in terms of, you know, if we needed a, a volley or if, if, if it was, you know, well done, you've dug one out or, Whatever it was, I think that's obviously what he's very good at, judging the mood around what's going on, what could derail us and stopping it before it happens. Again, it wasn't spoken about. Like, it just wasn't. Any time it was by Robbo joking around, it was just shut back down. But Robbo was always winding Hendo up and saying, come on, we've won the league now, you know, winding him up and Hendo would refuse to do it. It, it honestly wasn't spoken about when the, when the lead was 10 points, 20 points. Every player in the squad stepped up at different times to get there separately to, to win games for Liverpool. And they just went on this relentless run. I think about being Man City 3-1, I think about that Leicester game. We've just become world champions, we've gone over to Qatar. We got a plane back, we go to Leicester, third or fourth in the table and just steamrolled and we just think we are so far ahead of everyone else this season, there is no stopping us. Salah goes through, balls in the net, shit comes off, everyone's going mad and first time for years and years I've heard we're going to win the league in the ground and everyone meant it. I made up we had that Man United moment because in my 30 years of living I've never had that moment of we're going to win the league. I've experienced everything watching Liverpool but that's the one thing I'd never ever felt and I was in the ground for it and I had a lump in my throat like I couldn't speak so I was like oh my god it's, it's actually happening like I don't know what to do with myself. That, that team and what they did that year to, to be like I think it was something like maybe doing 27 of the first 28 or something like that it, it's absolutely ridiculous.
It's the Anfield Wrap and the Premier League, the Women's Super League and the Football League have been postponed until April the 3rd at the earliest. The games have stopped, football has stopped, all UEFA competitions have been suspended. We had a meeting, obviously knowing it was probably the last day we were going to train together and go home and we didn't know what was happening and the training session was very weird. It was almost like it was a group of mates that met up at the park for a kickabout. That was the sort of vibe in, in the training ground and you knew what was coming was serious and things were happening and it was like sort of a last dance together, if you like, before we didn't, you were going into the unknown and we said bye, went away and then, you know, the important thing straight away was having that communication and we had a massive group on WhatsApp, uh, managed to set up everyone in it, staff, players together. He, he was brilliant. He was on Zoom with us most days. Most days, having meetings, when we were doing our yoga sessions, he was there making sure we were there on time, had the right gear on. He, I think he quite enjoyed it, you know. It, it was good because it gave us purpose to get up in the morning, still be positive. He, he, was, he was like, I promise that I work, you know, we'll, I'll fight for, for you, for, for, this, for this league title that, that we're going to get. You know, it was probably the, oh, that was the first time where he, he probably spoke about that it was going to happen. Was it in that COVID time? Like, we'll fight for you. You know, it's going to happen. I won't let this not happen. It was a shame how it turns out in the end, but had it not been for the manager, it would have been so much more difficult. Because one thing I always cling on to in that season, I think it was a couple of weeks into lockdown. And the club announced he was doing an interview with him, and I'd be like, I'm everything, and I need this. Like, I need to hear what he's going to say, because yeah. to me, it's the worst thing in the world. Like, they might take the league from us, all this. And he, and he was just, the, he always says the right thing, but that was the most perfect. He was like, that doesn't matter right now. Like, there's bigger things at stake. Like, we can't cry and think, oh, why us? Why, why the one season that we're going to win it? Is this happened? He was like, it's not about that. I remember straight away thinking, like, I have been a bit like that. You know, I have been sulking, thinking, like, oh, pandemic, the year we win the league. But there is, a, there is obviously a lot more important things going on here. People are losing their lives. We're all together, weren't we? It was, it was very special, um, extremely special that we're all together. And it, it was for the best because because it was a bit COVID and if you weren't in the squad, you might not have been in the stadium, there weren't any fans there. So the best thing about it was that we were all together in, in the hotel watching it. Yeah! I remember I went to the back of the room, I was still talking to someone else, I can't remember who it was, one of the staff might have been smaller, something like that, and we were just watching everyone else watch the game and the goals going in and watching the emotions of everyone. Um, that was special because, you know, all these people have worked so hard and just watching their reactions as it went off and then obviously the celebrations afterwards. Unbelievable. So everyone's been waiting for it, everyone's been waiting weeks and months and so many years. It's done, John. Liverpool are champions. Bad days for bad day. Who wants to see these bricks fucking not even take hands? Get to four be all. So when they actually got it done, and my phone never stopped from the players and uh, Jürgen was, was on the phone at the time. They were trying to get me over to form be all um, at the time, but I obviously didn't want to gay crash a party that was for other people to enjoy and celebrate. Uh, so I had my own in the house. I, I celebrated myself. One before the game had been played, obviously, so everything was set up in the court. I think they did it fantastically well in the court. And 
It was just a wee bit unfortunate the first time we'd won it for 30 years or something and the supporters weren't there. I think it was Hendel's suggestion, you know, let's do it in the cop, you know, the fans can't be with us, but how many teams have ever lifted it on the, on the cop and things like that of, the, of their ground and yeah it was a great idea and again obviously we know it was disappointing the fans weren't there but we made what was best of it and um, us being together and we knew how much it meant to everyone. <laughs> Do you know what, we made the best of, of it, you know, whether it was Jürgen or Jordan arranging the, the, the ceremony which was up in, up in the fan and then we had a light show and our families were up there, somewhat they were up there and we, we made the most of it and we were all together, which was so important. Actually you're, you're privileged and maybe you didn't realise at the time, through Covid you're privileged because you got to the game and just to be at the game, to see it and just, for me it was a huge honour. To, to be asked to present the, the trophy to, to Jordan. We had like a you know a party or whatever that evening with, with wives and it was the best night of my life that I remember with like Jurgen was had his family there and because I knew I was leaving it was extra special, you know. It was the perfect night, dancing the whole you know, just one of them nights where you have where like that was unreal that night. Every song was a banger, all the people there you, you loved, brothers, you know, even the everyone's wives, it was just such a good night. The certain days that season that felt so great that when people say, Oh, you never got to see Liverpool in the league, I, I go, Yeah, I did. I was at I was at Anfield when we beat Man United. It was at Anfield when we beat Man City. Those who went to Leicester on Boxing Day say I saw Liverpool win the league on Boxing Day. You know, when I think about that season, I don't really think about the disappointments of not being in the ground for certain games or, you know, not having to have a parade. Yeah, it would have been lovely to have a parade, but it was just brilliant and it was just week after week after week and it's the, the best I've ever seen Liverpool play. I think he has Gladden still in his heart. He never forgot his roots. He is a king, he is a, the founder, he is our God. It started with him, everything started with him. I was getting the first messages from fans saying I already missed the guy. The energy, the feeling, the style of football is still very much there. There's a big imprint uh, that he left. Jürgen's changed Liverpool pretty much forever. He's added something to the to the club's DNA. And when he leaves, he'll be totally revered and right up there with the historical figures at the football club.